When I joined my first job, we used to talk about relational databases. Then came the concept of NoSQL databases. Then there was something called document database. So it kept on growing. Databases kept on moving ahead. Recently, I heard the term called time series database. I wanted to find out what is this time series database and I went and I did some debugging. I just saw what a time series database and how it can be useful. Let's see what is time series database in this particular video. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Time series database is a database which is completely optimized for timestamp or time series data. What does time series data mean? Time series are simply measurements or events that are tracked or monitored or in fact collected or aggregated over a period of time. So these could be data collected from heartbeats or even from motion tracking sensors or collecting JVM metrics from our JVMs or collecting trades in the market, collecting network data, etc. There are lots of analytics which can be done with this data. However, if we need to store this data, we can store it in a NoSQL database or a relational database. But when we query these data, we have to have an index and we query that. Right. So here we can use time as an index. So time series database are completely customized with timestamp data, which is indexed and which has been efficiently written in such a way that you can insert time series data and query those time series data much faster than how you will be doing it in a relational or a NoSQL database. The other key difference between a relational or a NoSQL database compared to a time series database is in the other database, we query with values of different data types. However, in a time series database, we ask questions only over time. So we just say the time series database to give a data over a particular period of time. That is how time series database always works on. The query ties up to a time date range, which it can query. The other stuff which makes the time series database completely different or optimized are the way these workloads are performed and how these data life cycles are managed or even summarized inside these many thousands or billions of records which internally has. So the way the architecture works is what distinguishes the time series database from a traditional database. That is how it can perform lots of heavy loads quickly and efficiently than the relational databases. So why do people talk about these time series database now, right? So why people are talking about these now and why is it a new thing now? Initially, when the time series databases were created, they were used for stock markets where people were trying to solve trading information. I have worked on different investment banks and I have seen people collecting data and doing something with the data so that they can identify patterns and come up with a solution. Initially, time series database was used for that purpose, but later on, the volatility comes into everything. So with the Internet of Things, where we collect every information, every every second, thousands and thousands of data are getting uploaded to cloud and companies are collecting lots of information about each and everything from where they can analyze or get some efficient data out of it. So that is why time series database has evolved where we are using time series database to do lots of monitoring stuff which are done over a period of time. The other reason is everything now has become compartmentalized. Monolithic mainframes have got been replaced with serverless architectures, microservices, containers, etc. Today, everything that can be a component is a component which is individually independent. And if you want to monitor these components and make sure that everything around this component is all good we need to monitor these and we need to monitor these at a particular uh, time as well so time series database helps in monitoring these microservices or collecting stats from these microservices and from those stats we can analyze and come up with patterns on let's say for example how much is the success metrics or how much is the failure metrics or how is the prof 
process behaving over time or when there is a huge workload or something like that so this is one example of using time series databases but you can use it for uh, collecting weather information for example satellites are connecting lots of information and pushing to the cloud at every event so using that we can identify how is the weather going to change over time etc and as i said with the introduction of internet of things every data is getting collected the traffic information is getting collected the data sources are increasing and more and more these kind of data are getting pushed into the cloud and how do we efficiently query these data that is when time series database fits in so there are lots of time series databases which are useful for example i have uh, just got a blog here uh, these are some top 10 time series databases um, which they are saying influx db prometheus or uh, graphite prometheus uses graphite i think so in fact people use elastic search as a time series database however it doesn't uh, give that much performance compared to other time series database but still you can use elastic search because it is still efficient enough to retrieve data in the form of time series data so how does this time series database distinguish itself from the relational database right so time series database architecture is designed in such a way that they have different way of storing data for example these data are stored as timestamp data information and they are compressed and the data life cycle management the summarization or the aggregation is completely different from how these are done in a traditional database so that is why time series database is able to handle huge amount of information they can scan multiple records at a time compared to a traditional database so for example uh, with a time series database it is common to request a summary of data over a large period of time let's say for a for the past six months right so this requires going through different range of data points to perform some computing operations right so that is why time series database splits this into different workloads and they are triggered in parallel so these kind of workloads are very difficult to optimize for with a in a distributed key value store and time series databases are optimized for doing this use case in a given millisecond of time there are some other use cases where people use time series database for aggregating and storing these data for example there could be data collected for every millisecond and these data are huge if we collect for every millisecond right so we can compress or aggregate these data which got collected as a part of a minute and then they compress it into a meaningful time range so that it can be used as a trend analysis for over a period of time because milliseconds of data might be huge so you can compress that and then store it for a minute or something and then you can store it for more period of time than compared to how we would have stored for a millisecond data mostly people try comparing time series databases with cassandra mongodb or hbase the major difference between these are there is a quite lot of investment when we do cassandra mongodb or hbase database however in terms of time series database the cost involved is comparatively less because time series database is equipped only for time series data and it does that job very well however the other databases which i mentioned do something extra additionally to what time series databases can do as well and the other stuff about these databases is as a developer we might have to write more code in order to push these data models in order to equip with the time series information however if we are using a time series database you can do that out of the box because it uses apis via the apis you can read and write into the time series database there are less toolings available with cassandra mongodb and hbase in order to query these data however time series database provides all these complete tool sets where you can insert and query data using apis and toolings which are available so that is it about time series database i hope you guys got a basic understanding of what is time series database let's see how we can use time series database in the coming videos i might even try to create a video on prometheus i'll try to set up prometheus in my system i am not sure if i'll be able to but i'll definitely try that and then we'll see how time series data looks like if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much